Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to hop on and do an up close view of this bag from the Marc Jacobs. But before I get started, I do want to say thank you to those of you who have subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I put out a lot of videos about contemporary designer handbags like Coach, Michael Kors, Fossil Furla, as well as some luxury items like Gucci, Burberry, and Goyard. And also I hope you're all staying safe and healthy in these crazy times. So this is a bag from the Marc Jacobs. Um, so the Marc Jacobs is Marc Jacobs' new-ish kind of higher-end um, line. So Marc Jacobs' kind of lines and their pricing is kind of confusing. So Marc Jacobs in the past used to have two lines called Marc Jacobs, which was their kind of higher-end brand, and then Marc by Marc Jacobs, which was their contemporary brand sold in more kind of contemporary stores like department stores like Macy's, um, and things like TJ Maxx. Uh, but now they have kind of altered the naming of their two lines. So their more contemporary line is called Marc Jacobs. Um, and that's the one that you see in like Nordstrom Rack, TJ Maxx. And then the Marc Jacobs, like I said, is their kind of higher end line that is sold in places like Nordstrom. The bags are a little bit pricier. Um, and I think that's kind of how it works. If you guys know anything more about Marc Jacobs, please do leave a comment um, below because I'm totally new to the brand, so I'd love to learn more about it and the history. So this bag is called the Marc Jacobs uh, Kiss Lock Mini Leather Tote. Um, it's called a Kiss Lock because the closure is a magnetic Kiss Lock. The bag is very beautiful. Um, I purchased it for around $220 from Nordstrom. Um, I will say, so I purchased it recently, and the only reason I purchased it recently is because I had a gift card to spend. I know a lot of people are not trying to spend money right now, given kind of how uncertain the economy is and how frequent layoffs are. Um, so I just do want to kind of point out that I bought this because I had a gift card. Um, the bag is relatively simple, but it is very beautiful. Um, so the front of the bag is just kind of all plain black. You have one smooth leather tab here, and the rest of the bag is in pebbled leather. And then you have the gold kiss lock detail with the Marc Jacobs there in um, a raised gold metal. And then the bag is kind of constructed out of multiple pieces of leather. So you have one piece of leather here, and then the sides are another piece of leather all the way around. Um, and then the back is another piece of leather, and you can see stitching there. That is actually for an interior pocket that's on the inside. Um, I never noticed that, like, white mark there. Um, it kind of went away, so maybe it's just dust. And then you have um, another piece of leather on the side here. And then the bottom is another piece of leather, and you can see here that um, there is like an X across to reinforce it and can make it a little bit more stable. Um, so in terms of the details of the bag, so I showed you already that it says the Marc Jacobs there in a raised metal, and then you have the kiss lock detail here. So that actually says the Marc Jacobs as well. And then um, the bag has top handles. Now interestingly, the top handles are not attached to this bag with like D-rings or any kind of hardware. Instead, there's like a hole cut in the leather, and then the strap is just kind of looped through and stitched together. Um, that's kind of interesting to me. I don't know if that would be more or less durable than like hardware. So on one hand, you know, this kind of has a whole big chunk of leather holding it, so it should be maybe um, stronger than like a piece of hardware. On the other hand, hardware is really easy to fix. So if like if this was on a like a D ring or something like here, if that D ring were to open, I could just take some pliers and close it. If it were to break somehow, you know, all I would need to get from Marc Jacobs is that D ring. Um, so I'm not sure how I feel about the fact that there's no hardware here. In addition, I'm kind of worried that if I were to put something heavy in this bag. Now it is a relatively small bag, so I'm not like you know I'm not carrying a laptop or anything in here. But um, I wonder if these holes would stretch because you know leather is a material, so it could certainly stretch if it's put kind of um, under enough stress or you put enough weight in it, so I wonder if these holes would get bigger. Um, so yeah, in terms of that design choice, I don't really know how I evaluate it, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about this way of attaching a top handle. The top handle has just one stitch down the center. Um, I don't necessarily love this. I wish that it had kind of the two stitches that you typically see along the sides of a, of a handle just to make it look a little cleaner and a little bit more finished. Um, the sides of the handles do have some black glazing. The glazing is in, you know, pretty good shape. It's 
pretty smooth and nice. Um, it's like, I think one thing that I don't necessarily love about coach bags is when you see the glazing, it tends to have a little bit of texture. Like, you know, it definitely looks like it was applied by hand, whereas this looks very smooth and very finished. Um, the bag comes with a crossbody strap. Uh, I still have a bit of the packaging on here. Okay, so I took that packaging off, and now you can see the um, crossbody strap, I think, in a little bit more detail. First, you can see that there are two stitches along the sides here, which, again, looks a little bit more finished. The crossbody strap is in a smooth leather, not a pebbled leather, so it matches better with, like, this little tab rather than maybe, like, the pebbled leather of the bag, if you see that there. Um, the adjustment of the strap is really interesting. It's kind of these little... Um, button holes so you don't have a, a buckle like um, like usually you do with a crossbody strap instead you kind of pull um, the strap out of the main hole and it's pretty hard to adjust these straps so this is not something I feel like I could do on the fly um, and then you can put it in a new hole push it into the main part the like the round part this is pretty difficult and then I think you pull to kind of lock it in uh, and then you do have the loops to hold the excess of the shoulder strap to keep it from kind of curling or dangling away. Um, the strap is held on by these gold clips. You can see here, they're very nice, very shiny. They say the Marc Jacobs on the back there. Um, they're just kind of a normal clip. They don't have any kind of you know push mechanism. Instead, you just push the little um, claw in. Uh, in terms of hardware, that I think is all of the stamping on the hardware, just the side of that um, clip. The You can see kind of how the strap, the shoulder strap is finished. So this was, I guess, two pieces of leather, and then they're all sewn together, and then a big kind of gob of glazing is put on top of everything to finish it off. Um, I mean, this is how a lot of shoulder straps are finished, so I can't really blame the Marc Jacobs, but it does look... Um, it is a big gob of glazing. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, so in terms of the inside of the bag, so the way it opens, let me just show you here. You have your kiss lock and then you just open it like that and you can see the magnet closes very strongly. Um, you just have two magnets on either side here and they kind of close with each other. Um, I have it stuffed so I'm going to take some of the stuffing out. So that's what it looks like unstuffed, and you can see that at least right now, as the leather is, I guess, fairly new and still kind of stiff, it's holding its shape really well. I kind of wonder what it would do over time. Like, I wonder if this bottom would start to sag out or anything. Um, so if if I like were to be carrying this bag, I think I would want to have a bag organizer in it to really make sure it maintains its structure, because I don't think this bag would look very good if it was all floppy and kind of uh, worn in. So when you open the bag, you can see the inside there. Let me turn on a light for you. So yeah, you can see the inside of the bag is actually a suede material, but it is stamped with the Marc Jacobs kind of everywhere. And you can see the inside of those seams. And down in the bottom there, you can see the back gold plate. And that gold plate is actually the backing of the logo here on the front. Um, the interior also has a, a pocket. So that pocket is made out of a smooth leather. It's a very nice smooth leather and you just open it up. It's a very, very generous pocket. Let me take the stuffing out. So you can see the interior of that pocket. The back of the bag is, again, it says the Marc Jacobs. Um, and then you have the interior suede of that leather. So what they did to construct this pocket is they basically took one piece of leather here and then they, um, they just sewed the other half of the zipper onto the actual bag. You can see that seam on the back, if you remember. So this pocket actually doesn't have any backing. The backing of the pocket is just like the backing of the interior of the bag. Um, in terms of the interior, the only other thing here is this tag. Uh, I don't really understand. This tag just looks very um, cheap to me, I guess. Like, why is this kind of sitting here? Um, and then you can see the bag says made in Vietnam. Uh, in terms of um, the the content of the tag, it says nylon and polyproline, I guess is how you pronounce it, uh, which is concerning. I thought this bag was made out of leather. Um, so I'm not really sure what that's about or like what that tag really means. So yeah, that's kind of the, the full extent of the bag. Uh, so like I said, I bought this bag for $221. It was like 25% off at Nordstrom. 
Um, I am on the fence about whether I'm going to keep this bag uh, for a couple reasons. First and foremost is because um, the Marc Jacobs just does not have resale value at all. Uh, they're frequent changes of their line names um, and the fact that their bags are sold in Nordstrom Rack and everything. Like People just don't value the Marc Jacobs bags. So if I did ever get tired of this bag, I really would just not be able to get any of my money back, um, I'm pretty sure. So I'm kind of on the fence because if I kept this bag, I would really be committing to this bag for, for life. Um, the other thing or the other reason I don't really know if I want to keep this bag is really just because um, I'm worried about the structure of the bag. Like I said, if I kept the bag, I would get a bag organizer, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to find a bag organizer for this bag because it is like a, a weird shape of a bag. Like if you look for a bag organizer for something like a small long shop, they're much narrower um, in terms of depth. So it would be hard for me to find a bag organizer that really fit this bag well. Um, and then the last reason that I don't really know if I want to keep this bag is because of the kiss lock closure. So the kiss lock closure is a magnet, like I said, and it's a pretty strong magnet. But I'm a little bit worried that if I were to put anything in here that's bulky, this just wouldn't close around it. And I know that because when I put, when I tried to put the stuffing back into the bag, like the tissue paper that came with the bag, um, it was like a little bit, you know, overstuffed and it was really hard to keep this closing closed. Uh, so it doesn't seem very secure in terms of the closure. Um, so I just don't know if that's a kind of a usable bag for me. So I'm on the fence about whether I'm going to keep it. In all honesty, I'm definitely not going to return it anytime soon because of the current situation. Um, I think that, you know, returns are going to take a really long time to process. There's going to be a lot of um, wait time and so I would be really nervous shipping in like a $200 bag to wait for who knows how long a month three months to get a refund um, so I'm certainly gonna wait until Nordstrom stores are open for business in order to decide whether I'm gonna return this but for now I'm not using it I'm just gonna leave it kind of on my shelf to look at um, and then I will decide after everything is kind of open and, and back in business to see whether I want to keep it and then the last thing to mention is I did get a dust bag with this bag um, it's a nice dust bag. It's nice and thick. It feels like a canvas material, um, which is fine. <laughs> uh, it's not necessarily that special, but I just did just want to mention it in case you were wondering. So yeah, thanks guys for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you like this bag. What do you think about it? Have you ever bought anything from the Marc Jacobs? Um, and if so, like, do you like the bag or not? Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.